Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Mother Game Time! Hope you guys are doing well today. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a game called Void Train. This is out on the Epic Games launcher right now, but it is going to be releasing on Steam in October sometime this year. And I imagine along with that, we're also gonna see a new content drop as well. I've been playing this game with my friends almost every night for the last few weeks, and I've amassed about 25-ish, 22-ish hours in the game and I wanted to show it off a little bit because I've been having a good time. First things first, uh, this is the character creator. There are 15 pages of things you can change for just your character's head and then one page for the body. <laughs> Not that you'll ever be able to see your character because of course this is a first person survival game. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope you enjoyed the look at Void Train. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. My main save file here has 24 hours. We'll be taking a look at this at some point in this video. But first, I wanted to show you what the beginning of the game is like. So we start in a workshop with voices on the other side of the door telling us to come out one by one. I think I'm going to lock the door. Come on in, colleagues. So this is gonna sound weird, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on what this game is actually about. I'm pretty sure Nazis are trying to get us, and then we escape into a void between realms with our trusty train cart along with us. As you can see, there's not too much to this right now, but if I go back inside, we can see a um, little scale model of how our train works. We come through one portal, push through on a track to another portal that empties out into somewhere else inside of the void. Uh, we can put our train together so it could start moving. If we come over here, we can find the handle for the trolley and then go back to the train to install it. Now, I think all that's left to do is to turn on the gate. It needs power. We could do that by flipping this switch here. And as you can see, that is quite impressive. Visually, this game reminds me a lot of the Dishonored series, if anyone's played that. The lighting and the shadows, as well as just the movement and the gunplay later on. Did I mention there's guns? Remind me a lot of Dishonored. Well, we have to go to the other world to escape our captors. The brake is on the right side. That should put us in motion. As we come to, this is one of the realms that we'll be spending a lot of time in. Notice that there's just fragments of objects drifting through the void, but we're not alone. There are some creatures here with us and we are introduced to one of the many wildlife that traverse these lands. These little things usually travel in packs. We can actually kill them to collect their fat or leather or meat for eating in order to survive. But we start out with very, very little to our name. And I believe I have control of my character now. As you look around these floating islands, some of these are actually reachable later with the uh, correct tools for crafting. But we're gonna need to get moving. So let's pull the brake. That's backwards, unfortunately. The in -between begins. Our heroes are about to start their adventure. Wait, wait, wait! Forward, not backwards! Oh, goodness, just use this transmission thingy. So we can go forward or backwards, as you see now. We have a brake on the right side that we can pull at any time to stop. And then this transmission handle yes. changes the direction we're going in. Now, our heroes are definitely about to begin their adventure through the many dangers that lie ahead. Oh, so much excitement awaits. 
It will be difficult to summarize my experience for this game in one video. This is not good. At this rate, we'll never finish this story. I don't want to be that guy, but maybe we should hurry a little bit. You know, maybe we can hurry when I'm ready, that guy. It'll be difficult to summarize my, my whole experience in this game in one video. I've been playing almost exclusively in four player co-op where every person has their job and I am in charge of managing the inventory of a massive train and also the majority of the day to day crafting. Whereas my friends usually float around here in the void and gather up a lot of the resources. As you can see, we're basically swimming out here in the void. I mentioned there are a lot of similarities between this game and Raft, and this is one of them, the, just the movement. However, in Raft, you are often assaulted nonstop by a giant creature. As you can see, that's not happening right now, <laughs> but that can happen later. One thing I really like about this game is the fact that if you just need more time, I could stop here. And theoretically, I could stay here for as long as I wanted. Or if I've decided that, you know what, I've done a lot of looting, maybe I'm ready to get out of this place. Or let's say I'm being chased by something and I want to get out of this place. I love that you can control the pace of that super duper easily. Now, as you can see, all of the materials I need are kind of floating in the void around me. And as we uncover more like uh, better resources, we'll be able to find even more stuff around us. But for now, yes. let's speed up a little bit. No less from you. Full ahead. Allons-y. Oh yeah, the five times. That'll be a nice boost of speed. And look at the difference between this and what we were doing before. And I could still jump off my little train and do some gathering out here. Uh, we have a quest up at the top right to gather four wood and four scrap metal to make one of the crafting things. But now the train is kind of outrunning me, so I can hold F to kind of reel myself back in. We're always going to be tethered to something. We're never going to just drift freely in space but we can explore the areas outside of this with some rings later on so by gathering this scrap metal what the game is allowing us to do is unlock some crafting it's going to tell us about building right now as you can see we don't have a lot of space to work with but if i build a research table i can place this down anywhere i want oops i can place this down anywhere i want and it's gonna go right there now at the research table i can actually start to upgrade my train with various things if i find four more scrap metal i'll be able to make a smelter and if I make a smelter, I can then make a container. There is a massive crafting focus in this game. And I love how cooperative the crafting is in co-op. I'll just shout out, hey, I need scrap right now, call it all scrap. I'll sound the horn on the ship as well. Just be as irritating as possible. So my friends wanna come give me scrap and shut me up. Now, if we were traveling at faster speeds, I could collide with this debris in the void and take quite a lot of damage, actually, depending on how fast we're going. Even with just this rudimentary system, we're long past this on my main train, but this thing could still get going at quite a good speed. One gripe I do have is that I just researched the smelter. I gathered all of the materials needed to research this, which coincidentally are all of the same materials needed to build it. But instead of being able to build the smelter, I just researched it and somehow lost all of the parts or they became unusable. I feel like if I've gathered the stuff to research it, I should also be able to build it, but that's just me. The visuals in this game sometimes is just really stunning. We've seen some levels where there's massive arrows, like from a bow and arrow, poking through the sides of the void, almost like we're a miniature or 
Those arrows were shot by the most giant giants you've ever seen. It's a really cool aesthetic. I hope I can show you a few more biomes today. So we have the smelter made. We researched that at the table, but now we're going to need to actually smelt something. So if we put in this four scrap metal, it'll turn that into two iron bars. But this needs fuel in order to actually generate heat. So we're also going to have to add wood to the smelter to get it burning. With both of those things added in, pretty soon we'll have some ore ready for more research at the table. Now this is technically a survival game as well, so you do have a hunger and thirst meter. I can find organic material that I can eat later on, I can cook it out there, but I can also find water for myself to drink. If you do not eat, your health does not regenerate. As far as I could tell, at least in the game right now, you never really have to eat or drink unless you want to heal. You're not going to like fall over from starvation. Well, I smelted those iron bars. We can now make the, I'm on phase two now. I can now make containers. And this is kind of one of the core pillars of the game. Go out into the world around your train. As you play, you'll be able to venture further out and find more stuff. You'll be able to collect stuff easier as well with a few gadgets and gizmos that you can make later on. But you turn those raw materials into actually useful things for you to use on your train. Keep in mind that right now is the most simplistic that this game will ever be. For instance, on my main save file, if we're cruising along and not paying attention, there could be mines on the track that attack our ship. There could be barricades of not only inanimate, like a huge rock that's blocking the track, but there could be checkpoints for enemy factions that start shooting at us and trying to take our stuff. Next up for research was the workbench. I'm able to build that right now. I'm just gonna slap that onto the back. The workbench allows me to refine some of the iron bars. Uh, it looks like I can only make bolts right now. If I get three more iron bars, I'll be able to research more components, but it looks like we don't have time for that right now. This section of the void has come to an end. Is that a big ribbon? I know sometimes in the back you can see something swimming in the background. Look at that chain connecting to something huge in the back, too. All right, well, the gate is coming up quick. Uh, I don't have a weapon yet. I, I hope this isn't too hostile. For some time now, our heroes are trying to understand where they are and who could possibly build such wonders. Upon further inspecting the platform, it becomes obvious to them that someone used to live here. An idea occurs to our brave adventurers investigating the abandoned depot. Lore is kind of spoon-fed to the player as the narrator sees fit. We can also, you know, fill in some of the dots on our own as well. But I need to make it over to whatever this interactable is, so the narrator is happy with me. Ah, here we are. Yes, yeah, someone definitely used to live here, and they're not looking too good either. But on the table... We find our first Somebody weapon. Been in good graces with the goddess of luck. Now, the revolver has unlimited ammunition. We can use it to break objects like this. We can use it to fight our foes. But it is on the weaker side as far as DPS. 
at least starting out. There is a really deep modding system in this game that allows you to basically craft different weapons that have different effects, like we're in a dungeon crawler all of a sudden. For instance, I had a shotgun that shot fire damage on top of its normal projectile damage until I lost it in the void. I'm still salty about that. Now I was given this gun for a reason. There are creatures, including ones that look very shark-like, that will try to interfere with our day-to-day -day operations. What we have here is a leech, and somehow I missed that many times in a row. What? Leeches latch onto the ship and slow it down. Now, I'm trying to go at full speed to see what happens at the next checkpoint. But I can also use my gun for a little hunting on those small creatures we saw at the beginning. Like I said, they drop leather and fat. Well, there's one really easy way to get that from them, and it's the revolver in our hand. Now let's jump ahead about 20 hours and progression. As you can see, the train is a little bit bigger. I actually have a console over here I can use to show you a bit of the layout. So we have a steam engine in the front instead of that push-pull system, which gets it moving pretty fast if we can afford to actually fuel it. Coal is so hard to find right now. Each of these individual platforms can be increased in size by using these resources here until the limit is reached. And as of right now, we are actually at our limit. I believe as we research stuff, more room will become available. So we have the front of our train where the steam engine is, as well as the driller to process some bulk items. This entire second cart is a crafting station in the back and storage in the front. And then we have our weapon and mod station on the back end. I'm using a shotgun of some kind that I can <laughs> just pelt my enemies with. Uh, if we head to the... Um, weapon mod station on the very back of the train these are all containers just for weapon mods we really enjoy customizing our weapons quite a lot this is what i was using before and every single one of these parts can be swapped out for another mod we can actually completely change it from being a shotgun to being another type of weapon by swapping out the barrel and that would cause it cause it to use different ammunition this does have a fire effect so i do raw dps damage and then also burn damage when i attack my foes it's pretty cool setup this little thing is a Reflimo. We named it Darcy. Uh, we can actually find mushrooms and feed these things in order to unlock unique cosmetic items. They also, I think, help take care of the train. This is our big crafting area that we've built out. You can see a lot more advanced than what we were doing before. We are on research level 20 rather than research level 2. That's quite a big jump. However, the fundamentals of the game are still here. Pick up raw material, which we run out of so fast. Wow, we actually have scrap on board. I've been eating this stuff up like crazy. Scrap and wood make a lot of the essentials, even this late in the game. However, picking up this stuff has become a lot easier. Let me show you. And as you can see, we found ourselves in a little bit of a nighttime biome here. So, as I'm venturing off the ship, not only do I have more upgrades that let me swing out further, but I can actually launch myself back to the ship fairly easily by looking at these anchor points. I don't have to reel myself back in. Also, my number one gun is actually just a tool to help me with collecting. It's a little grappling hook. So if I see something I want, like this scrap down here, all I gotta do is wait for the blue circle and then I can grab it. Allows me to basically extend my reach a ton in every direction. And there's the added benefit of if the ship is actually moving, if the train is moving at a decent rate, I can still gather stuff without putting myself in harm's way with all of the floating around. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, we're under attack, boys. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. This is a shark that is coming to break my stuff, and I'm all by myself. I've never defended the train by myself before. Uh, I don't have a ton of shots left with this shotgun, so maybe I should use the pistol. Actually, if it's coming in, we might want to hit it pretty hard. Hey, got some burning damage in there, too, forcing it back a little bit. Now, at this stage in the game, I'm going to constantly be bombarded with stuff that I have to pay attention to. I was thinking about getting the ship moving a little bit faster, but... Oh, God! I kind of have to give this guy my full attention at the moment. Hey, bud. Get out of here. Now, again, when he dies, he does give resources. There's probably some fat, probably some leather floating back here that he dropped. Actually, I'm not seeing too much of anything. God. Never looked into the mouth of one of those things. Oh, God, there's mines on the front of the ship. Hold on. Crap. Crap. Put me back on the train. I need to get back on the train. Oh, God. Break, 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 break. We good? <laughs> yeah, I cut that one a little close. All right, and we got a leecher attached to the side. God, this is hard by yourself. Okay, uh, so um, kind of looks like we're a little too close to this. I can actually defuse these by walking up to them. I had no idea. Let me show you how we normally deal with these things. It's called shooting them. <laughs> I do like that I can push these out of the way. But like I said, there's a lot of stuff that I have to pay attention to. By the way, our floorboards broke underneath the steam engine and I wasn't able to repair them. It kind of sucks. Okay, we'll just push these diffused ones out of the way and keep moving. I have to watch the front of the train though. Ah, notice these golden fireflies going around this item on the right. That's letting me know that this could be a very important item. And indeed, it is. This is coal. We need this to fuel our level two smelters to craft more advanced materials. But we also need that to get the train moving at something more than a crawl. That's why it's so hard to actually keep the train moving at a decent speed. I mean, not only are there mines on the track, but this is a very rare resource. Look at that way off in the distance. Just on the other side of that fog, we can actually see something massive swimming. Almost looks like a giant catfish with manta ray fins or something. I'm glad we're not closer to it. Let's just put it that way. Very glad we're not closer to it. Gathering stuff with the gun is so much faster and I can just kind of eyeball what I need. Like there's some scrap there. I swim towards that for a second until I get the blue and then immediately go somewhere else. Oh, hold on. I think we might have an event next to us. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. This actually leads to... Hey, get out of here! Get out of here! <laughs> this actually leads to a gauntlet. I have some footage of us doing a four-player version of this, and it's almost like a Borderlands arena. You jump in with your team. You might have some ammo. You might not have some ammo. But you have to survive the round. You kill off all of the enemies, and then in between rounds, you get restocked a little bit. Of course, while you're doing all of this, if your friends die, they're taken out for the round. Your gun could break and be jamming up. And if you take too much damage and your whole team gets wiped, that's it. You don't get anything. But recently we found out if you survive for, I think it was 15 rounds, you actually get all of the loot available 
We were able to do it one time. It was actually super fun. The enemy types evolve as you go. So they start off with like almost basic Zerglings that walk at you. Eventually they add in like Baneling style creatures. They add in Hydralis style creatures that are hitting you from afar. And you just kind of kite them around and stay alive. It was pretty fun. Ah, over on the left, we have a crashed train. No, I mean, it stands to reason that we're not the only train that's ever come through here, right? I'm gonna hit the brake and we can go over. Usually these have a decent amount of materials on board. We crack open this box. Yeah, a few iron plates. Unfortunately, my inventory is very full. Hold on, I'll be right back. It almost feels like you're exploring a crash ship in Sea of Thieves where someone else used to be here, but now you hopefully are gaining the benefits. I tried putting in fuel and some water for the steam engine so I could see what it actually looks like when it goes faster, but it looks, looks like that's not working for me today. These fireflies that are off to the right of the train right now, and you could see them a little bit further back, they're actually leading me towards few different types of puzzles that can be solved. I have some footage of this too with my friends. There's one type of puzzle that is like lasers that you have to connect to a grid and you have to get the order right. Some of them are super complicated, but once you figure it out, you actually get a chest with some really nice rewards inside. That's the same kind of uh, chest that gives you the mushrooms to feed your Rafflamos on the ship for some cosmetic items. There's also other types where you listen to sounds and try to put pictures that correlate with the sounds. And I think a couple other types too, but that's all I have the footage of right now. These things next to us look like giant pistachio shells or seeds or eggs that something is hatched from. On the track up ahead, we have another roadblock as well. If we ran into this, our ship would take damage. However, all we have to do is shoot the top, shoot that bulb and the whole thing melts away. Just another way they're making sure you're paying attention to where you're going. Uh-oh. Looks like the Nazis set up a roadblock up ahead. This game is super chill and relaxing until it's not. And this is just one of the ways that these guys can hinder us. Now, I need to make sure I don't run into this roadblock and we're going to have to get out there and actually defend ourselves. Now, I'm the crafter of the group. I have the weakest gun. I don't, I didn't eat anything. I don't have any armor. I don't know how this is gonna go. I imagine the enemies are easier uh, now, now that I'm in a single player game, but who knows? Uh, okay, uh, keep, an, keep an eye out. I don't see anyone jumping out just yet. I think I have to get into that building to disable the roadblock, so... Oh! Shots have started! I'm getting away from my train because I don't want them to shoot all of my very expensive components. That's kind of... Oh, yeah! Oh, there's a lot of bullets that way. Could have tried this side. Now, I do have a shotgun. I should be pretty good up close. Oh, yeah, he's taking some damage. Reload behind this. I gotta jump over this rail. Pushing up on this dude. They do have armor. If I hit their armor, they take less damage. Who would have guessed that? Now, this is the contraption that's keeping my train at bay. Bro, in four-player co-op, this place is literally flooded with enemies. Is it, <laughs> is it really just three or four dudes right now? Okay, there's a few more this way. There's a few more this way. Literally every time we land on one of these, it's like we're fighting ugh, an, an entire regime. So at least there's like 10 people here that I have to deal with. Health, it, 
Why is my train moving? Why is my train moving? Why? Fuck. Okay, it did hit the bumpers. I think that's totally fine. Did one of them get it moving? That is the most toxic thing I've ever seen. This guy's pretty armored. I'm trying to push him back away from his group. I'm out of ammo with my shotgun. We're forced to use pistol. Falling back yet again. I'm headed for the high ground. Oh, and they're chasing. Okay, good. Good. Not too many more to go. I'm actually thinking about just freeing my ship and beelining it out of here. At the very least, we're cut free now. Now, why would you want to fight these guys? What's the point? Well, a lot of them will actually drop their weapons and we can start using them. Uh, and even if we don't like the entire weapon, we could piece it out for mod parts for the future. Jeez, that guy was tanky. They're dropping a little ammo on the ground. Are we getting any rifle ammo? None so far. Okay, dude is moving up on us. Headshots doing more damage than body shots. I like to see that at least. Do we find any? Oh, no ammo at all. Really? These tokens that we're picking up can actually be used at the stations for gambling for different resources. Now, who the fuck hit my brake? Uh oh, two guys still grouped up here, backing up a little bit. They look like they're kind of uh, stuck behind a rock here or something. <laughs> I like how sometimes, point blank, my gun doesn't fucking do anything! <laughs> I've always felt like I was the weakest in our group, and I'm really feeling it now that I'm by ourselves. All of my friends have their pistols all upgraded and kitted out, and here I am with a baseline pistol, trying to make it work. But hey, we got it done. There is a ton of ammo to be found on stations like this. We can also look around for a little bit of lore tidbits or for different weapon mods. But the most important thing is that I just shot this battery out of the way, which opens up the path for our train to keep moving. I think this game has a really fun, chill vibe. Until it doesn't. Until you're interrupted and everything seems like it's on fire all at once and you have to tend to it. Like creature attacks or those little roadblocks that our enemies can set up. Uh, I want to show you just how complicated some of the crafting can get. So, we know how to make iron, but there's also copper bars, which is the same scrap metal, but also needs some chemicals to go along with it. Chemicals are pretty abundant. We actually have several different boxes for chemicals because they are so common. And I just periodically refine those down. Well, we're getting into the tier two materials. We need these tier two smelters to get them going. And now, we need to not only get copper, which is scrap and chemical, we also need to find some zinc to throw into this as well. But these smelters can't be run with mere wood like these are. We also need to find coal to get these running, but we also need coal to get the ship to move faster. So maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe we don't want to get that running at, you know, maybe we don't want the ship moving really fast and we want to just focus on collecting and smelting and things like that. That's what we normally do. Well, there's a tier two workbench now, and and that requires a whole bunch of crazy to get things going. For instance, a dampener. I don't even know what that's for. It's going to need something from the lab too. This is sealant. Sealant requires two chemicals refined together and then zinc on top of that. But thickener requires chemicals melted together, zinc on top of that, and then resin, which is wood and chemicals melted together at another station. Everything is so intertwined. Every crafting station leads into another. And we're just on tier two resources. I don't really even understand how deep that rabbit hole goes. But keeping my ship stocked has been a really enjoyable process, although we clearly need more zinc boxes now. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed my first look and first impressions of this game. It's a very difficult game to snapshot, I realized as I was sitting down to record this, because you kind of control your own pace that content comes at you, and we usually move pretty slow. So I wasn't even able to show off everything I wanted to today. But if you made it to the end, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Mother
Game Time is a show where I try to just show off games that are interesting me every week. And there should be another episode coming out next weekend. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you again soon. Bye, Darcy!